Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of Rick and Morty Season 5, Episode 7, Gotron Jerry's Rick Vangelion. From Voltron to Mafia films, the power of family has never been more potent than in the hands of a giant incest baby. I'm gonna break down all the hidden jokes and animation details that you might have missed this episode. We open on the way to Boob World. It's a world for you, but it's actually to Boob World! <laughs> Yeah, Summer does that annoying thing of holding out the last note, thinking the whole car needs to hear her vocal solo. Yes, I did grow up with sisters. Now, the end credits actually score this theme song. Boob world, boob world. Rick spots a blue ferret Gotron down on the moon and suddenly swerves down to it. Notice how Morty's face gets smushed against the glass hood when he does that. Now, they don't wear spacesuits or helmets on this moon surface, but that bluish atmosphere suggests there might be some breathable air. Also, this is a cartoon, magic xylophone. I'm just going to move on. I withdraw my question. Gotron is, of course, based on Voltron, which was an adaptation of several Japanese anime series from Toei. The basic premise of a team of five piloting separate animalistic robots that come together to form a super robot, a premise that you also saw in Power Rangers. But for Rick, this represents the perfect outlet for his family of five to unite without having to split up into a B-plot, something he snapped at Jerry about in the Decoys episode. I say we split up. Some of us take down squids while the rest Engage of us- Engage in B-stories while the track simultaneously? No thank you. And he loves this this simple idea of assembly so much that he drunkenly stacks it exponentially, 5 to 25 to 125 and so on, similar to how he used to get off on the idea of Unity's Unimind. And using ferrets is fitting then, because ferrets are illegal in places like California, New Zealand, and Australia for fear that releasing them in the wild will cause them to overpopulate rapidly and damage agriculture and native wildlife. And voiceover narration begins. That's how it all began. To my sister, it was just another game. But what she didn't know... That was the moment everything changed. Wait, what? I had gotten my first taste of respect and my first voiceover. Uh, I can and hear I knew you. then can and there, I wanted more of both. Hello? Using voiceover like this is, of course, a nod to mafia films like Goodfellas, which partly influenced this episode, similar to influencing the episode of Dan Harmon's previous show, Community, Contemporary American Poultry, one of my favorite episodes, which had a similar plot about the group getting too greedy with a good thing and turning against each other like mobsters. Beth and Jerry eat spaghetti, a food that they seem to eat a lot throughout this episode, just another nod to the Italian mafia film genre. And Rick says, Let's just get Gene from next door and a homeless guy. No, hold on, f Gene, f the homeless. Yeah, and Another mention of next door neighbor Gene, and Rick using the homeless like this is kind of a go-to for him. Remember, he used a homeless guy to build his anatomy park dream. By the way, having a healthy diet and getting all the nutrients I need are both on my to-do list, but counting all the riboflavin or vitamin whatever I get every day is not always a priority. That's why I use athletic greens to fill the nutritional gaps in my diet. Whether I'm being good and eating all my carrot sticks that day or being a naughty pizza eating boy, more often the case, if I have some athletic greens in the morning, I know that my body is getting what I need to be healthy. Athletic Greens is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. It's great for folks like myself looking to build up and stick to a healthy habit and who want some nutritional insurance to help with immune and gut health and help me sustain energy throughout the day. Athletic Greens is available in the US, Canada, UK, and Europe, and it's super easy to use. No need for the 14 different pills and capsules, just one tasty powder that mixes easy. It's got all the antioxidants, probiotics, and other words I can't pronounce that I know are important for my health. Okay, so this is what I essentially do every morning. Just opening up my packet here, pouring it in, give it a nice little mix up here. Bottoms up. It actually tastes really good. So to get the Athletic Greens Immunity Bundle that comes with a one-year supply of vitamin D plus five individual travel packs for free with your first purchase, just go to athleticgreens.com slash new rock stars or click that link in the description. Summer defends her giant incest baby from episode four. Oh my God, we made a giant incest baby. Oh my God, you might be a clone. I exist because you guys failed to abort me. We get the family we get, not the one we want. Yes, makes reference again to Beth being a clone, but also calling back her own existential crisis from season one one when she found out she was an unplanned pregnancy. Essentially, Summer's now kind of doing her version of Morty's pep talk to her in that moment. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. Now the voiceovers return. Something new was forming. 
and I was at the bottom of it. I let Morty have his voiceover. It's really all he had left. Okay, can you hear me or not? Do you mean can I summer hear you? No, my voiceover can hear your voiceover. What's the difference? One would be telepathy, dumbass. Yeah, Morty can consciously hear both of their voiceovarians, whereas Summer's host body and mind doesn't seem to react at all to them. I just think it's an interesting reflection of how Morty is a bit more in tune with any foreign influences in his mind. Remember back in the Total Recall episode, it was Morty who figured out the gimmick of those mind parasites. Just a way of showing how Morty has been around the block a few more times when it comes to crazy crap that Rick has inflicted upon them. The assembly split screen montage is pretty much shot for shot recreations of the Voltron form sequence. And then with the settings of a volcano, a waterfall, a jungle, etc., they pretty much parallel the Zords of the Power Rangers coming from different geographical locations. Now the giant insect monster looms over a version of Golden Gate Bridge on this other planet, though notice it doesn't actually attack the bridge. It just screams at the drivers because, as we find out in the post credit scene, these beings are really just trying to communicate the cure for AIDS. In fact, the bridge is only damaged when Gotron knocks the monster into it. Now Rick knows this first attack wave was pointless. It really is to just tee up their assembly. Activating Link Dock, Inner Morphs, Ratified, post neutrinos Maximize. Yeah, just like the random activation phrase of Voltron. Activate Interlock. Dinotherms connected. Infracells up. As well as the animation of their assembly, their sword formation, those all match up. And he says, go, go team, it's Gotron time. Just like, go, go Power Rangers. And it's kill pose with its back to the monster. It's just like how the Megazord would always turn to camera and let the monster explode. Now, right after the kill, notice Rick is drinking from his flask again, showing how living out this fantasy is causing him to revert back to his old habits and toxic tendencies. Rick invites the five families, of course, like the five families in The Godfather, Big Fat Rick and the Tux is based on Don Vito Corleone, Marlon Brando, Ricardo Montoya, of course, based on Tony Montana from Scarface, Al Pacino, Hothead Rick is based on Sonny from The Godfather, Vito's son, played by James Caan, who, like that character, always flies off the handle. This is the family that made a giant incest baby. Had the government launch it into space. It's still flown around out there somewhere. Are we ever gonna live that down? Yeah, clearly the writers anticipated that introducing Giant Incest Baby in episode four would lead to some backlash. Now, sure, it is possible that a lot of these lines could have been added right in the last few days via ADR. But remember, episode seven leaked shortly after the Sperm Monster episode came out, so they wouldn't have had a lot of time to do it. And in retrospect, one might argue they intentionally released it early after that backlash came out. And the fact that they ended this episode with a fully animated sequence of Naruto coming back means that they knew what they were doing doing when they introduced an incest baby. They had a plan going into this and they know where the line is with their audience. But little detail here, I like how Summer's eyes dart over to Rick when the baby comes up because she secretly spent more time with that incest baby on Mars than the rest of the family knew about. Hothead Rick's ferret explodes, kind of like the death trap that was set for Sonny in The Godfather. And then when that happens, Summer coldly closes the garage door, leaving out Morty and Jerry, kind of like how Michael Corleone has the door closed on Kay at the end of The Godfather. And it's also kind of like when Hank Schrader closes the garage door to trap in Walt with him on Breaking Bad. Then we get this montage showing the five heads murdering their enemies all at once, much like the baptism massacre sequence on The Godfather. And they form the Gogotron, 25 family members in one. Actually, in the grade, you can see how little Ricky Wrap It Up is shorter in his frame. And if you listen closely to the lyrics of the song, it amazingly fuses the mafia in anime genres. The Gogotron curb stomps a monster on a dam, he shoots one in an already dug grave, fills cement and buckets around each of the feet of a centipede. Meanwhile, Summer, holy crap, appears in Yo-Yo Rick's hotel room where he's apparently yo-yoed his male lover to death. Maybe like in that Godfather part two scene when Senator Geary wakes up with a dead sex worker in his bed. This is really messed up. Morty narrates. I ended up the left foot of the left foot. I guess because our robot didn't have an asshole. Yeah, remember in the first Gotron, Jerry was its left foot, suggesting that this position is the bottom of Rick's totem pole. Over by Rick's blueprint wall, there is a pile of finished flasks. One blueprint is pinned with a trench knife, yikes. And Rick has insanely written, buy more parts, more, more, more. And then pi to the square root of 8098Z, which is kind of one digit off from 8008Z boobs. And go parentheses Tron plus XXX. He's just use the word Gotron to make a math formula. Now the nightclub is decorated with G lights and an ice sculpture of a ferret Gotron. And Rick introduces Summer. This is 
Our queef. Uh, our queen. Yeah, Summer is unfazed by this gaffe. She waves anyway, just happy to have Rick's approval. And little Ricky wrap it up has a martini in his coat pocket, ready to toast at a moment's notice. Now Morty ends up in the car with other Gotron pilots, whose eyes and teeth plus signs and mannerisms all follow the anime tropes and stereotypes. What your grandpa did is called appropriation. Not cool. Ah! Yeah, also their movement is more stilted. You can really see it on the opening of the briefcase of Boo Bucks, animated to match the lower frame rate of old school anime. But Morty snaps when the guy threatens to kill him, which is such a funny reaction that's increasingly becoming the case with Morty. Anytime his life is threatened by assholes he doesn't respect, it's just like how he responded to Tina Tear by biting off the guy's finger. He even pulls the trigger right at this dude's face, but at the last second, the gun gets diverted and takes out the driver. Back outside the nightclub, there's some graffiti on the wall reading, get caponed for the Chicago gangster, but with owned in it, you get it. And then on the dumpster gun dumb that's also the name of the magazine kendra reads later both for gundam wing little ricky wrap it up dies oh pa. little ricky i'm all wrapped up summer guys i know you don't trust me but what have we become yeah morty talks through his death because he beth jerry and summer all weep tears leading to beth paying off her son this is sixteen thousand dollars we got from the deep state for stepping on that trailer park that should be enough for school lunch and home repairs now i gotta turn my back on you good lord just like that scene in goodfellas when polly pays henry off and then turns his back on him making henry cry so the warehouse of the go 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 tron aka the g3 is massive you can actually see the original tier one ferret tron now appearing really small compared to the full assembled form. It's actually similar to the sense of scale used with the Jaeger factory in Pacific Rim. And then Drunk Rick says, And then the Gotrons make the Gotrons make the Gotrons make the Gotrons. Telling us that his ultimate dream is probably five to the power of five. Just a bit of obsessive numeric harmony that's actually reflected in his G3 drawing, which is based on Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man sketch, which he drew to show the humanistic ratio and godly design of the human body with its five points. Also, notice on the paper underneath that, the letters BLM. How very Rick of him to keep his activism buried like that. Also on his shelf are some Gotrons arranged like Gundam figures. And when Kendra does her little salute, there is an anime sound effect. She's got an entire workforce. Back home, Morty sips a high C Ecto cooler, it looks like. Just like we saw Kid Loki drinking on Loki. And if you remember one of the treasures that Rick found among the Sex Dragon's vault last season. And Summer returns with a confession. I appreciate it, but there's something else too. I've been really really sensitive about family lately because of something I've been keeping secret. Ooh. Okay, who's on the Supreme Court and what state do we live in? It's been years since I've thought about this. Yeah, Jerry just jumps right to abortion, recognizing how now with a 6-3 conservative majority on the U.S. Supreme Court, abortion rights are now increasingly dependent on whatever state you live in. Summer reveals that her giant incest baby is still alive and that she's been training them on a secret based on Mars because she feels like a fifth wheel in the family, no other family member to pair off with. Really, that five pilot Gotron was the first setup that gave her an equal role and function in the family that didn't force her to pick sides with a two or three person grouping in the family. Rick's G3 cockpit is a freaking mansion. It's got a statue of Gotron holding a planet and a pool, paintings, ferret statues holding candelabras and pale through their own heads, which you could see as a metaphor for how these ferret Gotrons are really the instruments of their own destruction. Really this gilded setup is obviously an homage to Tony's home in Scarface. And when the anime pilots betray Rick, it sets up this direct Scarface homage. But the incest baby arrives to save the day. My God, it's beautiful. Again, the music from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, the Star Child scene. And notice how its wristband shows the government called it Weapon 1 Meta 80085. Again, boobs. And made in Las Vegas. And some are named him Naruto after the manga series. The anime pilots get sucked out the airlock with their helmets lowered. You can actually see their faces turning purple and their eyes popping out. And Naruto crushes the G3 head and they save Rick with one last zip line. Jerry gets trapped outside the home shield as a monster attacks, just like Morty actually worried he would back in the decoys episode. Oh, shit. decoy family. 
I think Jab was still outside. But really, if you think about it, this monster probably wouldn't have attacked Jerry, just screamed at him in an unintelligible alien language the cure for AIDS. Meanwhile, their voiceovers are revealed to be from voiceoverians nested in their ear canals. The way they look when they're pulled out all gooey is much like the gross insect-like tracker bot from Neo's belly button in the Matrix. And in the post credit scene, yes, the monsters are revealed to be compassionate beings from another dimension just trying to share the cure for AIDS. Their classroom walls read to serve and protect, and on the whiteboard, protect at all costs, warn them, teach them. Very similar brains, but also loud noises, because they stupidly believe that just screaming louder will make them clearer. The poor creature tries to communicate the AIDS cure. One part lemon juice, four bay leaves, a pinch of sea salt, but is then killed. We'll never know, even though all these things are in most of our kitchens. You can support New Rockstars by checking out our merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOS. Follow and subscribe to New Rockstars. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.